computer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CS61C once a week lectures live session on parallelism. Woo! Great to have you here. Great to have you here. Good stuff. Hope you, boy, were as wrapped as I were, was uh, last week with CNN. I don't think I've watched more hours of CNN in my life than I did last week. Was everybody, were you, were you locked into that? I had it on, on, on lockdown over here. I had my second monitor we, always. We, we, I mean, I don't watch television, but yes, I spent too many hours. And, you know, the, the, there was an impact that I posted, uh, you know, today's videos for the lecture last night at like 2 a.m. <laughs> because I had to make up <laughs> right. my time. Right, right. Yeah, you were on last week. That's true. When you're on, it's hard to have yeah. something take. I was off, so yes. I had a little chance. That's right. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go for what we're talking about today. Today's agenda. Again, welcome to week 12, everybody. We have some wonderful guests from Apple, Jared, Dave, and Anand, and we'll introduce them. Then we're going to talk about computing the news. I've got a delightfully humorous computing the news to share with you. Uh, a schedule. There's no new policy updates, just, just FYI. You miss, that bullet is usually there. We're missing that. No policy updates. And then we'll have an ask me anything to talk about, you know, anything else you have folks think things are on students' minds. So I'll do but I'll most of the time, go most of the time is going to go to um, to our chat with Apple folks. Um, right. We have um, uh, Dave Conroy, Jared Zerbi, and Anand uh, with us. We'd like to ask them, you know, how they ended up uh, over um, uh, in in, to, in, uh, in, in uh, this part of their careers. But then ask, after that, we're going to ask them for advice um, on internships because we have heard uh, earlier in the semester that Apple is interested in interns and full-time employees. Um, uh, so we, we are going to try to spend uh, most of the time um, on that. But let's start with the introductions. Um, and um, so maybe we can start with uh, Dave because uh, I think people know Jared already. <laughs> uh, Dave. How did you end up over, you know, were you, did, did you decide, you know, when you, when you started kindergarten, you know, one day I'm going to work for Apple. And tell us also I, what your role for Apple is now. People may not, not have sure, heard that. Yeah. Sure. I'm Dave Conroy. Um, I'm a, I'm a fellow at, at Apple. Uh, a fellow is a great uh -oh. role. You, get, <laughs> you, uh, you get to have all the, uh, the uh, benefits of being a vice president without having to do all the management stuff of being a vice president. So it's great for a technical person like me. Um, I've been at Apple for 17 years, um, and uh, before that, I did a short stint at uh, a consumer electronics startup that got acquired by Microsoft, and before that, I did 20 years at Digital Equipment, um, who man many of you don't know who they are, but they were the people who invented mini computers on the East Coast, so they were like a force of their era. Were, were you an East Coast person at the time, Dave? Yeah, I was in oh. Maynard. I was, oh, in okay. Maynard at, I was in Maynard and Hudson, and then yeah. I moved out to Palo Alto and worked in Bob Taylor's lab at the end, yep, right? So yep. I know all those Xerox Park guys pretty well. Sure, sure. Uh, the, the, my path to Apple is when I was at digital, Apple was building this thing called Newton that some of you will remember. And I was building a microprocessor called StrongArm, which most people didn't know, um, went into a second generation Newton that never shipped. And uh, and so it, it all, you know, we, we were building this thing and then that Newton got canceled and, uh, and it all kind of disappeared. And then years later, I got this call from this guy named Mike Colbert out of the blue, uh, who was at Apple, who knew me from like back when we worked together like a decade before on this Newton and said, you should come to Apple, it'll be fun. And, uh, and of course this is 17 years ago, which means if you're gonna come to Apple, you uh, have to decide how comfortable you are going to a place that's going to go bankrupt in the next six months and you're going to have to find another job. Um, but I liked the people. And so I said, what the hell? I can find a job in six months if it all goes, if all goes to crap. And uh, it turned out it worked out kind of okay. Um, I've worked on a whole bunch of things at, at, uh, at Apple. I started off working on the Intel transition, which turned out was the reason um, that uh, Mike wanted me to come, but I've worked on silicon for the phones. I've worked with, I work collaborated with Intel on the chips that went into the portables. I've worked on IO standards. I've worked on all sorts of things. Um, so that's me. 
Right. Oh, one, one thing, clarification here. How many Apple fellows are there? I mean, are, is it like 5,000 or like less? Uh, <laughs> two or three if you count Phil Schiller. Three, three. Our, I think our, yeah, Phil Schiller is the third, right? Three wow. if you count our marketing fellow. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we call that Not that many. We call that rare air. Well done, Dave. Well done. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nice. Um, Jared, uh, how did you end up in that lab behind you know that's behind you? Oh, it's 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 really great because I got I got a, a two vice presidents behind me just in case I need you know backup so I can I can I can you know yell back to them at any time. Um, no, I I mean the, so my path to Apple was I when I started uh, college I thought I was going to be an aeronautical engineer, and then I took my first aeronautical engineering class and I said this is ridiculous. These people have no idea what's going on. I mean, there's, the, the, you know, it's, it's just fudge factor after fudge factor. There's no science here at all. It's just a, you know, a complete slapdash thing. Um, and then, uh, you know, I started, I had always uh, loved tinkering around with computers. So, um, so I started looking at, at double E and this was uh, back in the uh, early to mid eighties. Uh, so um, I took a class, uh, across the bay from where you guys are uh, and got to design and build my own chip. And I just thought that was the best thing I had ever, uh, I had ever seen, uh, you know, the fact that I wasn't going to be doing some problem set that some professor had dreamed up at two or three in the morning. And, you know, uh, and I, I could actually build something of my own and have it, you know, be something different. Um, I just found the, the ability to express, uh, uh, you know, ideas in silicon to be just fascinating. And so that was um, 33 years ago. Uh, after that, I, uh, I, when I graduated, and I would like to impress on people the impact of when you are interviewing uh, and you bring to the interview a die photo uh, a plot and a schematic of the chip that you made, it has a different kind of impression on on people than rather than like, you know, digging around in your transcript for a grade, you know, or showing someone a problem set. Because for somebody in industry to see a student that's actually built something and understands how to bring it up and what the, you know, where the, the bugs are and stuff like that, it's it's different. It's a different kind of interview. Let me just say that. Um, so. So, uh, so it usually we goes well for the student. Is what we're trying to say. Right? <laughs> it goes very it well. It goes very well for the it student. It goes very well. Uh, it goes. It opens a lot of doors. So right? There's a class. Yeah. There's a class. Uh, 194 that we're helping. Uh, you know, sponsor uh, at Berkeley for people who want to tape out their own chips. Uh, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of these classes. Do logism diagrams count? <laughs> That's good. I got a few of those. <laughs> That's good. It helps, but it's but it's not the same as actually building something. Um, so, uh, don't tell uh, them that. So I mean, after, they're, after they're graduation, I went to a company called uh, VLSI Technology. Then I went to MIPS Computer Systems. I was designing floating point units, and I went to Rambus for twenty one years. So when I look at Dave, I'm like, Dave's a deck guy, you know. So I think people still look at me and think that I'm a Rambus guy. Um, because that's where you know you, you you put in a lot of time there. I've been at Apple for seven years. Um, I'm fortunate enough to work for the other Apple fellow. That's that's that's, that's technical, um, not Phil Schiller, and um, and uh, and working in a team called Exploratory Design, which is uh, really a lot of fun because uh, we get to do a lot of uh, crazy things across lots of lots of different. Um, spans. And uh, before we get into the q and I just want to make uh, two points. Uh, number one, no, we can't talk about anything about uh, what's going to be announced tomorrow. So if you can just take that off of your questions list, because, uh, uh, you know, we're not going to get an on fired uh, in, in the process of, of this meeting. Uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, number two, uh, yes, Apple has internships. Yes, Apple has internships for undergrads and hardware. Um, in fact, the largest organization in hardware technology, which has the most internships in the in the hundreds, uh, uh, for for this coming summer, has a charter to, and they are successful at hiring 50% undergrads for internships. So, um, so just recalibrate yourself on that. All right, and Anand, maybe you can introduce yourselves. You know, did was your 
path to Apple the most straight, straightforward. These guys took a little bit of a windy path. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and what's uh, your and what's your role in Apple as well? Yeah, share that. Uh, sure. So um, I work in uh, a group at Apple called Platform Architecture. Uh, I manage a few teams that are focused on, at a high level, you can think about it as power, performance, and prototyping. Um, so we study how fast things are, how much power they draw, and try and kind of uh, create new things that, that we might turn into uh, products or technologies in the future. Um, my path to Apple was a little unusual. Um, so I've only had two jobs my whole life. My first job uh, was a company I started when I was 14. Um, it was a deep technology publication called Anontech. So my first name plus tech at the end, you can kind of guess what that was, uh, what that was about. Um, so I started that back in April of 97, um, kind of showed up at the, just before the dot-com boom or as the dot-com boom was happening. Um, and so I, I rode that wave up. I, I never took any VC or anything like that. This was entirely a uh, uh, homegrown. Um, so I, I rode that wave up. I lived through the dot-com bust. I lived through the, the, the kind of uh, rebuilding web 2.0 um, and then lived through the great recession managing the company as well. Uh, and then again, re rebuilt and, and continue to grow. Um, and as I was kind of you know, entering into my thirties, I'd been kind of doing the same thing for a very long time. My goal always was to like, you know, at, at some point uh, kind of take a step back. Um, I always said that, you know, every big transition my company had uh, we always grew a lot. I ended up on a plane a lot more and I ended up with less hair. Uh, and so, you know, we were in like kind of pivot number four over this kind of 18 year time span. And I said, look, it's, it's time for me to slow down a little bit. Um, and the plan was to always, you know, kind of exit and, and go stay with the parent company for a while and help them build other verticals similar to, to what I had built. Um, I always believed that kind of my core innovation there wasn't necessarily how we approached analyzing computer and mobile hardware, but our approach to journalism. Um, and so I wanted to go and kind of uh, uh, duplicate that a, a, across a bunch of different verticals. Um, around the time I was having these kind of thoughts and, and getting the company ready to kind of take that next step, uh, Apple approached uh, with an interest in hiring uh, someone who worked for me, um, which was not unusual. We, we you know, were a good pipeline for uh, uh, people who were students. They would get a lot of industry experience working for us. And then oftentimes they, they you know, either stuck with us for a long time or they would go work in industry uh, and it kind of give you a leg up over the competition. Um, so they approached me trying to hire one of my folks, again, not unusual. It was a connection that we enabled and helped make. And in the conversation, they said, hey, you know, it'd be kind of interesting if you join. Um, and I had never thought about working for any of the companies that we covered. Um, I think most of them, by the time product got to us, you know, we started as a PC hardware and technology review site, eventually expanded into consumer electronics, servers, chips, all of that stuff. Uh, I always felt that like, you know, I could see the politics just from the outside uh, that, that meant that I didn't want to work at most of these companies. The, the only one that, you know, kind of seemed okay to me was Apple. Um, and so I entertained the thought, you know, I had a conversation with uh, uh, the person who became my boss. Um, and after that initial conversation, I was like, yeah, this makes no sense. But after a bunch of these conversations, uh, I, it kind of opened me up to the ability to influence uh, and, and make an impact on uh, just well, honestly one of the greatest companies in the world. Uh, and then I always figured, hey, the bar was low enough in journalism that a 14 year old kid that knew nothing could kind of do well in it. Uh, so if I ever wanted to go back, I could, I could always do that. Um, and so I've been at Apple for a bit over six years now. Uh, and yeah, that's my story. You know, the, 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 this is really, thank you. This is really funny. Um, do you know how many times Dan and I, when we go for these computing in the news, uh, you know, Grab stuff from Anantec. We pull it every week. It's great. <laughs> you know, here, here is a you know live in, in flesh uh, through Zoom. Uh, your Anan <laughs> of Anantec. But this is funny. I mean, most things do not know that, that there was a 14-year-old kid behind that website. <laughs> for yeah, a while. I, actually, former, I kept former. it under wraps for three months uh, when I first started. I remember the day someone posted in a comment that like, hey, this kid goes to high school. And I thought my life was going <laughs> to I was like, this is- You're dumb. outed. You're like, outed. Look yeah. at that. Fascinating. Kept it a secret yeah. for three months. And then everyone thought my dad wrote everything. And I was like, that's hilarious. But uh, yeah, that's, oh, a, that's another brilliant. story. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's great. All right. Um, and there are a couple of questions that came in, guys, feel free asking questions. It says, did any of you get to meet Steve Wozniak or Steve Jobs? <laughs> Well, by the, by, by, the time I by the time I showed up, you know, Steve Wozniak was long gone. Um, 
I, I would see him occasionally at, at launches because he always got to sit in the front row because he always got an invitation. Um, I met Steve a couple of times. Um, most of the stories about Steve is true. And that means that lots of people spend a lot of time trying to arrange that they perhaps didn't have to be in a meeting with Steve. Um, and uh, the, this Mike Culbert guy that I talked about before, uh, he and Steve were, uh, were, were very, very trusted. And so most of the time I could get anything I wanted to Steve simply by telling it to Mike and then Mike would tell it to Steve. And if Steve went rah, he went rah at Mike rather than at me, <laughs> which was a win. All right. Um, there is another question over here. I, should we tell them or should we keep the secret for another day? We are not done grading and checking everything. Um, I feel like keeping it a secret. I, I, I feel like we keep it a secret. I don't yeah. know. Uh, yeah. What's the prize for Project Three? Is it, is uh, it? We'll find out in a yeah, few you'll days. Find, you'll find out. You'll find out. It'll be I good. Know, but I heard that it's arrived, right? I mean, it's <laughs> right. I, yeah, it, it's it's shipped. It, it you know we have bought. Uh, uh, I don't know if it was right. They they said it was shipped to. Yeah. It's in Corey Hall somewhere in shipping and receiving. We're gonna have a ton of fun getting to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just keep the make sure you you keep feeding it and cleaning it because if otherwise you know. <laughs> right. yeah. You dribble some food in the corner yeah. every couple of days, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, don't shake the box. Um, People ask you, is it their own CPU? Is it, is it a custom yeah, Apple no, CPU? No, no. Yeah, they're, they're going. They're going. It's, the a, yeah, a, yeah. it's the A15. It's the A15. We get it. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, I mean, one of the key things that we wanted to talk about here are uh, to elaborate a bit on what uh, Jared said um, about these internships, uh, right? I mean, lots of our students uh, find a place in, in internships in. Um, in software as undergrads and they, they enjoy them. Um, um, and you know, a good number goes to Apple and does a, a software internship. Um, but often there is this uh, idea that you can't get, uh, you know, there, there, you can't get an internship in hardware. Uh, now you're telling us that is, uh, um, you know, that everybody's wrong about that. <laughs> and uh, um, can you tell us a little bit more? What's the secret there? What, what do you need to, to, to know? You know? Can you do it with uh, 61C type of knowledge? Um, I mean, do you need to pass by like Dave interview, you know, the, the other fellow uh, activist, Bill Atas, you know, do they need to grill you for a little bit uh, and see how you do? I, I sure hope not. No, I mean, I, I you know. <laughs> No, uh, most most people are coming for internships will not uh, will not pass the uh, the Dill the, the the Bill and Bill and Dave uh, you know uh, failings. I, I think I don't think I would pass a Bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know these are the kinds of things that we don't want to ask too many questions about. But um, the I mean, sixty one C is absolutely you know getting into into understanding the way that machines work at a very you know deep level and a register level. Um, is is absolutely very important. There's a there are a lot of openings in uh, in verification uh, is is really applicable um, because you really deeply understand the where, where the machine's going. Um, there are a fair amount of uh, openings in, in embedded software that's that that is that are that are immediately applicable with a 61C background. Um, but uh, the more that you can branch out and the more that you can do and show in terms of your projects and, and project background and interests. In my view, those are the things that stand out in, on a resume or, or, or projects. Uh, you know, how you do in labs, how you do in projects. I'm talking more about what it is that you've that you've made that makes a big difference. I don't know, um, you know, David and Anand, what you guys think about um, students and software and hardware and how how you see them coming in and what you see as being successful. I mean, I'm a super. I'm a, as you know, I'm a super believer in internships. Um, I you know. It's when you're sort of learning this, this trade for lack of a better word, you know, a really, really important part of it is to have a really, really solid foundation on, on the theory and the next click above that. And academia does a spectacular job of doing that. But, you know, 
-hmm. A part of learning a trade is just learning how to get your hands dirty and the millions of little jobs that have to be done. And, you know, as someone who spent their whole life sort of building computers and shipping them to people, it's amazing how much of the work is just work <laughs> as opposed to, um, as opposed to like, you know, unbelievably fancy, remarkable, earth shattering work. There's just a lot of stuff that has to be done. Um, and, and it's important stuff. It's not, you got to do it. You, know, you have to kind of slog your way through it. And the good news for that is it means that, you know, for someone who's sort of at the beginning of their career, like an undergraduate um, in, in EECS, right, that you can come to a place like Apple and do some stuff that you're, that you're perfectly capable of doing with a little bit of the help from the people who are already there. And it's important, right? That, that you know, that this, this, this stuff that you're doing and you're kind of, you know, learning, you know, you're learning how to set up the thing for this CAD tool and learning how awful this CAD tool is so that you can be part of the people who know how awful this CAD tool is, right? That if this doesn't happen, there is no phone next year, right? It's, right? It's, it's really good. And you come out of it, you get to make a contribution to stuff that, that you get to see in the world and you get to learn just, you know, a little bit of the hands dirty part of the trade, right? I've, I, I'm, a, I'm from my background, I'm a Waterloo guy. And Waterloo is a place that believes in cooperative education. You can't get an engineering degree without doing it. Um, and I had the good fortune to, to you know, at the beginning to get tied in with a bunch of guys in this little engineering company who, you know, remembered building computers out of vacuum tubes. And I learned a billion things from them, right? It was just really, really great. That's yeah, I awesome. I, I can tell them, yeah, go ahead. And um, I, for me, and I think this is true, whether it's an internship or, you know, someone that we're just trying to hire who's, who's out of college, um, I think technical depth is really important. You know, be, be a master of some domain, have, have a lot of skill that you can demonstrate in some area. But the thing that I often find is missing is passion, right? Like, you know, we will interview for a position for a year and find one person out of all the interviews that year that really cares about the stuff. They really, they have passion for it. They're really enthusiastic about it. Um, I think that's a, you know, if, if you have the right intersection of technical depth uh, in something, whatever your specialty is, some technical depth and passion, you immediately stand out to me. Um, and it's such a hard thing to find, um, both amongst, uh, I think, new college grads, people who are in, in industry or even interns. But if we find someone like that, we, I mean, those people are the people that get routed to me and they're like, you need to go talk to this person. Um, and so I think that I, I can't uh, uh, overstate enough the, the value that I think that brings. So what do these guys need to put on the resumes for, for, to, to, to make that bar? I mean, there, there is a lot of them that we, I mean, that we I have. That, I mean, what? Yeah, to that point, I mean, to add on to what uh, Anand and, and Dave said, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to the person, right? It really comes down to the individual, having the, the tenacity and the follow through, you know, and Dave said a lot of it is just work. That means that what you do uh, to bring to, you know, what you do to differentiate the, the work that you do, you know, yeah, are, are you doing quality work? Are you bringing it, you know, on time? Are you, are you, are you making it happen? Are you supporting the people around you? Are you, work, you know, being a good team player? Are you thinking not just about your block, but are you thinking about other people's blocks? Are you studying the code around you? Are you, are you learning beyond what it is that you just need to do? You know, there's a great, uh, book about Bell Labs, and and I think one of the one of the leaders of the Bell Labs said, you know, what you do, um, you know, in the in, in the eight hours per day, um, at that pays for your that that justifies your salary and your you know your your medical, and uh, what you do in the other sixteen hours a day and the weekends, that's your bonus right there, <laughs> right? So you know, it's it's thinking about it's not and it's, and it's not just like pouring the coals on it. It's uh, it's the it's really, you know, thinking deeply about these things and spending some time and getting kind of getting hooked on on it, what it is the, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, the joy of it, right? You know, and if you if you're not if, if you're not loving it, then you know, it's not going to come out, right? So I mean, do do the thing that you. It's a little bit of a trope, but I mean, do the thing that you love, and and it will show through. And and 
one of the one of the one of my my favorite stories about when I first started at Apple was my wife asked me, you know, so after her first week, she said, Well, how's it going? And I said, It's good, but I'm hungry all the time. I don't know why I'm hungry all the time. And, and I and it, it didn't take me long to figure out it was because I would look down, get down, and start looking at a problem, and then start looking at what different people had done. And then before I looked up, it would be like three or four hours would have passed, you know, and, and it'd be like I mean, lunch flew by, and I was just like, Oh yeah, this is cool. This is really cool. This is really really cool. You know, so it, it 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 there are a lot of people who just love to nerd out on what it is that they do at Apple, and I think that um, that definitely is a key characteristic. So so I'll, I'll ask uh, uh, some questions over here on behalf of the class, and then after that, you know, we we get a few Q and A uh, questions that are coming in. Um, one thing that from my interaction with the students in the class, what they've figured out um, so far that they seem to be every day more and more comfortable with performance programming, embedded programming, how to fit things into tight spaces and get maximum performance out of that. And they got a good feel for hardware, but are one step away uh, from, you know, in 61C, one step away from actually building real hardware uh, past the logic What's your advice for them? I mean, first, you know, do you hire people who need to pack extremely tight matrix multiplication loop and you know, or a tight neural net into a little embedded space that is out there? Um, and uh, once when they master that, you know, how do they go and build their own uh, neural net hardware or, or or something else exciting, or maybe verify it, or uh, and and so on. I think I, I can at least speak from my orgs. There, there are people I employ who they. Uh, even though we exist in a hardware org, their strength is that it, it being in that intersection between really understanding how code runs on on uh, on bare metal and understanding the architecture. And so they never need to ever build a chip or, or verify a chip or do anything like that. But understanding and being able to exist in that kind of uh, uh, gap between the two is uh, it's very rare and very important. Um, and so people in that space with a lot of expertise on how to make code run very quickly. Uh, on the underlying architecture, that, that's that's a, a, a very important uh, skill to have. Sounds good. And how do you make the next step? <laughs> uh, what do you mean by the next? Maybe step? others can say. How do you actually go, you know, towards building your own um, um, hardware? I mean, how do you, you know, get comfortable interviewing for a hardware position, for example? Maybe perhaps a question for Jared. Jared would be better equipped for that. Uh, getting comfortable interviewing for a hardware position. I, um, I mean, I think there are two parts of it. One of it is that you need to, um, you need to, you need to uh, to come into it with some confidence. I mean, one of the and and the confidence comes by, uh, you know, kind of by doing your homework, right? If if you go in thinking. Uh, if you go into an interview thinking you are crazy if you don't hire me, like, you know, you are insane. I am the perfect person for this job because I've done this and this and this and this. And I really think that, um, you know, I can make a big impact here. That is much more powerful than, well, I don't know if I'm going to fit here and I'm not sure. And, you know, so I think, you know, do the homework that you feel like you need to do to be prepared and, and be over-prepared. When you're over-prepared, then, then it shows. It shows all the way through. And if there's one thing that I've noticed about, about people that succeeded at Apple, it's, it's a, a certain attitude of um, they're there to solve the problems that um, Mother Nature has given us to solve, right? In order to deliver the next, the next uh, feature, the next level of performance. Um, they're not there for some to, to to have them, you know, to wait around for someone to tell them what to do. Um, so a lot of curiosity, I think, is really important too. There's no magic formula. I mean, I think there are a lot of venues for for this, you know, for this class. There's the, the special pipeline. There's the flash chat signups. There's the applying through Apple. There's lots of this mechanics. Don't get too, you know, go for all the mechanics. You know, dot all the i's, cross all the t's, but do your homework. You know, know your stuff. And uh, and get passionate about the technology, and, and and the roles will come to you. You know, or they'll be there when you when you pursue them. And you know, the truth is, um, the truth is, and the, the truth is that 
for a lot of complicated hardware, a really, really useful thing for a designer to have is for lack of a better word, a sense of style, right? That, that you can, you can, you look at some pieces of, of, of hardware and you say, programming this is just ugly, right? This is a, this, and other ones you look at it and say, the person who, who spec'd this hardware understood how the software was going to feed it because it was clear they had written a lot of software to drive low level hardware. So don't underestimate the value of being a skilled embedded programmer, um, a, a really skilled embedded programmer who's grounded in sort of the fundamentals of, of the hardware underneath it is actually a pretty attractive candidate for some, some hardware, hardware tasks because you don't have to teach them style. That, that's a good one. Um, here is a, a question. Um, yeah, are you looking for operator dev uh, e courses? I was just typing an answer to that. that yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we mean, can answer live. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You know, 140, 151, 152. Those are great classes. But you know, uh, but like I like I was saying before, I mean, it's there's no like uh, formula. It's not like you're gonna you know go tick 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 and and then uh, you know your transcript has these things and then all of a sudden you know the 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 you know the UFO lands in your backyard and the and the, the you know comes down and and you know shovels you away to Apple. It doesn't work like that. I mean, a big part of what happens in those classes is you get to know people like Bora better. You know, you get to know people like Dan better or like Kirsty better or like Ricky better, you know, go, you know, learn the craft in a deep way and start working with the people that are that are at Berkeley that are so fantastic. I mean, you got, you got, you know, Ricky Miller uh, teaching an analog circuits class with 15 people on it. That's criminal. I would, I would love to take that class with her, with her. I mean, if, if you, if I was your age, whoever you are out there in Zoom land, if I was your age, I would go take that class right now, you know, and what are prereqs, you know, prereqs are guidance. I would, I would go to the professors and say, I, what do I need to <laughs> see now Boris never going to invite you back. I, you know, I would go to professors and say, I'm so excited about this stuff. What do I need to do to get to, what do I need to do to talk you into letting me take your class? Because if you're excited about it, it comes through in every single way. And it comes through in your style too. Just like Dave was saying, it comes through in your style. I can look at a, someone's schematic and tell if they were, you know, bored doing it or whether they cared about their craft, you know, it, it there's, there's, a, there's a key to this and it requires some degree of passion and I'm going to shut up. Now. All right, good. Thank you. Um, here is another one. What do you think? have been the biggest successes and failures for Apple's hardware group? And what do you see as the main challenges going forward? And feel free to also share about maybe the market wasn't ready. Like, you know, like the Newton was amazing, but we weren't, you know, we weren't ready yet. The market wasn't ready for it, even though it was a great product. Feel free to share, you know, either marketing or engineering wise in terms of that successes or failures. Well, I mean, it, you know, in, in, in recent times, we've had, we've, we've had a pretty, pretty good string of successes, for sure. Um, some of them beyond our wildest dreams. Um, we, we've had things that internally have not worked out quite as, quite as we would have expected, and we don't talk about them very much. Um, not, not because we're ashamed of them, because sometimes they end up turning into something that actually works out really, really well a little bit later. Um, you know, it, it's, it's uh, the, I, 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 I stopped counting the number of times we tried to build the iPad, right? The iPad, the iPad that you know as the iPad um, is not the first one. It's not the second one. It's not the third one. Um, we would we built countless internal prototypes and and either it was too big or it was too heavy or the display didn't work or or using a pad with a stylus is a stupid idea or i mean you know that that and you'd build it and you'd say well that's interesting we learned some stuff but we but we just we don't declare it a failure we just put it on the shelf um, until until something happens and then someone says well that's interesting let's take it off the shelf so 
and and frequently those failure internal failures turn into turn into successes sometimes you can learn as much from failure as you can from successes so you're like well, you actually you usually learn you actually more. usually learn more from right. failures than right. you learn from successes yeah. what, that's, what didn't that's, work what that's, didn't work that's, and why that's actually why my why when i when i when i do get to interview somebody i always like to talk about stuff that didn't work the discussion yeah. is usually um, far more interesting, and you learn a lot more about the person. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Yeah, and 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 uh, you know, there was a Berkeley project that went from 1992 to 1995 that was called Infopad, uh, <laughs> and it was a great success, although not a commercial. Uh, there was no immediate commercial transition. I mean, there are a few people. You know, the the guy that kind of was a driving student behind that is now a dean of engineering at MIT. So you can call call that a, a success. Uh, Ananta uh, Chandrakasan was the when I was at when I was at, of... when I was at digital in the research labs, um, HP announced that tiny little disk drive. I think it was HP. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, hummingbird, yeah, 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 hummingbird, right? Hummingbird, yeah. yeah, and we looked at that and said, "I know what you can do with this. You can make a music player." And we built this thing that had the disk and a signal processor and a bunch of MP3 decoding code that we licensed from Fraunhofer and. A bunch of software for it and built this thing that it was about like eight inches by four inches by an inch and a half and it could store like 500 songs and it had shuffles and equalizers and all of those things and uh, and it went nowhere uh, <laughs> uh, <but laughs> um, actually actually that's not quite true um compact didn't know what to make of it and this korean company came to them and said we would like to license that and they said, sure, right? Yeah. And Compact, they, the Korean company licensed it and built like a hundred of them or something like this and tried to sell them. And, uh, and nobody bought them. And, and it all seemed like a, like a, like a total failure. Jared's laughing because he knows where this ends, right? Um, and uh, then we built the iPod and the iPod was a great commercial success. And when the iPod was a great commercial success, all of these people would come, come out of the woodwork and try to explain why they had this patent that 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 read on the iPad, and the lawyers would point to this little Korean company and say, "That concept was previously available in commerce," and and uh, and and another patent would die. <laughs> All right, it was um, really funny. So I contributed to the iPad couple... before I even worked for Ap iPod. Before I worked for Apple. All right. Um, a couple of very quick ones. Uh, um, I think this is for a, for a Dave. Can you describe a little bit better what is good style? Um, the short answer is no. Um, you, you know it. You know it when you see it, right? You know it when you see yeah, it. You know, yeah. it when you, you know it when you see it. Right? You, you sort of look at it and you try to write some software to drive it, and you realize that, like, like you know. This device does not have some stupid read, modify, write bit right in the middle of a field that you have to change every time you start I/O that require you know or something like that. It's really hard to describe, but you can sort of you can sort of tell it when you can when you see it, right? You see this is really really easy to talk to, and the other thing is like everything is clumsy or the way the interrupt works is really crazy, and you have to read these four registers and dismissing it's really hard, and this as opposed to it just does the right thing, right? Um, good style or, or not good style probably rears its head way, way down the line when you run into scalability issues or you run into maintenance issues or all of a sudden you have to grow the team 10X in order to support the thing. Um, good style, good architecture, those tend to go hand in hand. And by the way, there's a software equivalent, which is just a good API. I'm thinking about, you're going to write some, some function, some method, some class. What's the API that you create for it? And style comes into that as well, certainly. Oh, uh, style is all over the place in software. I mean, are you kidding, are you kidding me? When do, you, when do you start documenting? Is that is that 20 minutes before you turn in the assignment? You start your documentation? Or are you doing it all the way along? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, th I, think, I think the thing about style is that it shows... Uh, and I saw the question here, do you may try and make the hardware as neat and pretty as possible? You know, I, I think the, um, the funny thing about that is it's, it's symptomatic of the mindset of the person that created it. How important is it to be, for things to be done in a, in a clean way, right? That means that I used to have a, uh, an instructor that said, 
I am so lazy. I will I will try a, a thousand times to make a proof that is one line shorter. You know, so 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 but that is but the, the idea there is to make a, a really clean implementation and to understand the value that there is, not just in you know superfluous elegance, but in terms of the quality of the work that's done. So when you look at a when you look at a wire wrap board or you look on even a, a proto board and the the wires aren't all helter skelter and they're not like, you know, hanging on and there's, you know, either, you know, by like one thread or something like that. It means that there's attention put to detail. Um, now, if someone, you know, had it all helter skelter and then they, they shoved it all to make it look pretty because they knew the professor was running over. I mean, sure, you can cheat on stuff like that. That'll get you a little bit of a waste, but the, but the, but really the, the more important thing is to get into the mindset of, spending the amount of time to be careful and, and cognizant and mindful of the different thing, choices that you're making because, you know, especially in, in programming, oh my God, the data structure is the most important thing. You should spend 90% of your time on the data structure and then 10% of your time on your code. Sit on your hands, either that or you can write it five times. You can write it the first time, figure out that's wrong, throw it all out. Write it a second time, figure out that's a little bit better but it's still wrong, throw that all out right a third time, you know, and then, and then eventually you're getting the hang of it, right? You know, you're like, okay, well then that's what, what, you know, you don't get to become an expert with that 10,000 hours, right? And you don't spend all the 10,000 hours, you know, making perfect things. You, you make a lot of pretty crappy things along the way. There was a guy when, at when DEC, debugging, who, yeah. There was, yeah. There was a guy at DEC, I forget who it was, but he used to always say that when he worked away on something for what seemed like an insufferable long time, and when it was all done, people would come in and look at the result and say, how did that possibly take you that long to do this? This is really easy, right? He knew that he had actually done a good job. <laughs> that might have been Dave right. Rogers who ran PDP-11 engineering for many years. Wow. We mentioned some of these machines, by the way, in the class. <laughs> um, well, um, good. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for coming, stopping by. Um, and this was very informative. Thank you, Dave. Guys, we, we had uh, Dave Conroy, we had Jared Zerby, and we had Anand uh, of Anand Tech himself in flesh. <laughs> and uh, so thank you again. Uh, and we'll see more of you. And we're going to be distributing these prizes starting for Project 3 right next week. And um, at, the, at, at least they're going to be paper certificates and then after we're done with project four we're going to distribute those as well and um internships uh, you guys are ready um these guys are telling you already and they want you so <laughs> make sure to apply <laughs> yeah. make sure to apply definitely and have good yeah. things to say all right thank you folks thank that you. was wonderful nice to see thank you all you. thanks thank again you. for your time yeah, everybody all right great stuff bye take, take care folks bye, -bye. bye. All right all right, good stuff. Uh, we're up to the schedule. Um, I wanted to actually do uh, the schedule. I think I moved to here. Here we go. Boom, there. I want to do computing the news. So I have this delightful <laughs> computing the news, which was uh, it's just, you know, with all the insanity of the election, it's nice to have something just fun and frivolous for the computing the news. Not like, oh, somebody hacks, you know, a voting system. And, oh, God, what does that mean for everybody? But thankfully, the only news that I can I could find was this really delightful, whimsical story, which was this. So they have now camera. If, by the way, if you have a if you have a have a goal to be a, a career and as a camera operator, I, I might encourage you to rethink your goals because AI is taking that job. Uh, AI is also taking the job of radiologists. Radiologists' job is to you know read a. So black and white picture and find out where the fracture is. That's something that can be trained very easily. Um, so watch out. My cousin is a radiologist and he claims he is, he is not going away. Well, I he mean, is using AI. He is using AI. No, no, I appreciate, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But, but I think the first pass may be but being, you know, being done by, by uh, computers pretty soon. So in this case, in the camera operation job, it's pretty easy. All you do is, you know, you're doing movement up and down. It's like driving, right? I'm just doing this. That's certainly something that a computer could do. So, you know, it's moving left and right. It's zooming. And so they figured out how to write some software to control a camera. And they had this. And it was doing well for, for recording um, so recording uh, soccer matches. And all you're trying to do is put the soccer ball in the center of the screen. Well, it turns out there, let me show you the picture. Mm -hmm. This is the picture of what happened. And... Um, you see, this is the this is the referee, 
And the camera kept wanting to put the referee's head in the center of the screen. <laughs> the referee had a bald head. And where he was standing on the sidelines, his head is actually in the field, like, you know, from the projection from the camera yeah. to there. And then, so he thinks, well, the ball is there. And so they kept the entire match, <laughs> kept going back from the game to the referee. And they didn't know, like, why does the camera keep showing the referee? What's the deal? What's... And it turns out and the light is it. <laughs> the lighting is just that way. I mean, it's exactly it's a reflection exactly as you know the the sun's on the far side. Of it. Anyway, I want to share that very humorous thing. Um, they confirmed it. They confirmed that it was a trouble. <laughs> the, the, the zoom thought that's there and it kept zooming in. Uh, and they they fixed that there was fixed shortly after the game ended. Blah blah blah. But it was just a lightweight funny thing that the the larger point of this is that machine learning systems, their computer trained systems can be very brittle. Uh, and this was an example of a brittle system. We see this with, you know, um, facial recognition, and other things like this. And so this is a case of recognition just being a little brittle. So just having some fun with that. All right, schedule. This is what our schedule looks like. I hope you can see this. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see here. Um, we're at week 12. I've shown you week 11 behind us and week 13 ahead of us. Um, we've got no lecture on Wednesday. So take a break on Wednesday, folks, for the whole campus. Um, rest and recharge if you can. And I think in two weeks after that, we're oh, going to have a so, so enjoy your Veterans Day and happy Veterans Day to everybody. Um, next week, oh, thank you. Next week, uh, Monday, today's lecture is on SIMD and Flynn Taxonomy. On Friday, we start a whole new module. So I want to encourage everybody who's behind and wants to kind of restart to jump in again, uh, really on, start on Monday, really, because Monday is really the first part of this section. This whole section on parallelism. This is the topic. If you see the bottom part of my slide here, it says parallelism. This is the topic of parallelism. So please do jump in. If you were behind, you can, you can catch up here um, with 32, 33, 34, 35. And then the fun thing is we're going to be adding 36 and 37, which is MapReduce, Spark, and Warehouse Scale Computing. So how can you, you know, literally with a couple of lines of software, a couple of lines of Python, uh, control a million machines. Really amazing stuff that, that these abstractions are just remarkable. So we'll share that. Uh, the Important comments about yeah, that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, project 4 depends basically, you know, you can start Project 4 with your C knowledge. You can get a good head start, start, with, a good start. Uh, yep. with the Project 4, yeah. Uh, there was a good guideline, um, guidance through the navigation through the Project 4 that was done by G. I think it's uh, recorded and please go ahead and take a look at that. Yep. Um, you know, in order to excel in it, you basically need to start with a Monday's lecture and then, you know, that um, is a little bit longer, but they really wanted to squeeze in these things that are important for the project. And then uh, you have, um, I think, about two lectures from Dan. Uh, Dan um, uh, Fridays and Mondays will get you everything you need to do uh, for the project. Maybe yep. Wednesdays as well. Yeah, maybe a little yeah. bit Wednesday as well. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, great. So now let's take a look at, at where we are with our schedule again. So this is another another pass on that. So we're in um, Parallelism Holiday, Parallelism TLP 1, 2, and 3, and then MapReduce and Spark in lecture. In terms of homework, none of this is new information. This is all just copying and pasting from the website into this, just so you know. But 7 and 8, we moved 7 and 8. We pushed them down and slid it to today, so they're due today. Hopefully, that isn't too 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 bad to be able to put them together. I've been told that it doesn't take that long to finish with both of those, and hopefully, you've been doing that. Um, we've removed 7, 9 and 11, although they're still shown the website because they were going to be for practice only. We're going to remove the dates. We're going to make sure it's there. But this is not new information. Just make sure you know that Nine and eleven are just for practice only. So get some get get some work there. Play with that. You won't need them for the exams. That was a question people were asking. You will not need them for exams. All the material, all the things you learn there, will also be teaching in lecture. And the exam will be tested on material that you could have gotten from lecture. So you don't need homework in nine eleven for the exam. It's not like it's really a secret thing that's there. That's different from labs. Oh, again, this is just a clarification of a previous policy. Lab the material is on is due on the exams, but we're, we're by not having you have to check to do a check-in, we're basically giving you flexibility to be able to do those labs anytime you want to. Uh, and ask our TAs whenever you have any questions, feel to ask them, but it's out there. It's like, it's like reading the book. So labs become reading the book. That's The book is also on the exam, so make sure you do that. We also took a look at the Project 4 deadline, and we moved that deadline back. Maybe we'll paste this again into Piazza. People don't watch these videos. But Project 4, we moved them back so you can enjoy Thanksgiving. It was going to be due the Monday after Thanksgiving, and no one's going to – I mean, that, that's going to be a, a painful thing for everybody in terms of Thanksgiving. So we slid it back to be due 12-2. 
and you have a little bit of time in Thanksgiving. It's not, it's, I think it's due Wednesday or Thursday. I think 12 2 is either Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday. It, it is Wednesday. We it's don't Wednesday. have a yes, ton of Wednesday. slippage after that because, right. uh, you know, there are some people who have uh, extra time and we six need to wrap things up. We have six slip days. This is so, it. You know, yeah, we, yeah, we, we couldn't, we couldn't days, go yeah. into, you know, into 2021, people, the slip days. So we did that. <laughs> um, and this is also existing information. Just we're just kind of saying it again. Um, the midterm retake was pushed to 11.15. We have 20, that's, that's 11.15 is a Sunday. You get 24 hours and we're going to be letting you know very early this week, CC is working on the on the file. We're going to try to make a pass on this and declare very early this week who needs to take it. Uh, and then we'll let you have a chance to say, well, I wasn't on the list, but I want to be on the list. Or I wasn't I was on the list, but I don't think I should be on the list because you can't find my video. So we'll try to get, have another pass where we'll declare a list of students we think should take it. Then we'll give you a chance to either add you or remove yourself from the list. We'll make a call on that and then give you the final list. And that's what, we're, that's what, that's what we'll expect to take the exam. But that's it. And again, we only have to take the exam for pieces that you missed. Uh, not for the whole exam, unless everything's messed up in terms of your video, in which case you might ask you the whole, the whole thing done. But that's it. All right. That's it. That's it. Any questions? I mean, I'm looking at the Q&A. I see nothing. Any. I'm looking at here. Whoa. Yeah, I think we're pretty clean. This is, and there's no information. So it's not like, well, we made this a new policy and there's questions about it. So I think we're pretty pretty clean there. But uh, And, and I, I have a collection of some internship postings. I'm going to start. Oh. Posting That's them on Piazza, and um, I, you guys are ready for many of those. I mean, you're you're in a good shape. Uh, go for it. Good stuff. And thank you, by the way, for attending. I see about about 50, 55 or fifty six people were here today. So thanks, folks, for coming to this. Um, uh, let's see. We're gonna yeah, have we 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 had a lot of slip days. We were not done grading, so no paper certificates today yet. Uh, we are not done checking everything out right. from Project Three B. Yep. Good stuff. All right. All right, folks. All right. Doing pretty well. Thanks, everybody. Good to see you all. Thank you. We'll Thanks. see you next week. All right. Take care, folks. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye.